Sunday in Easter and I want to invite you to worship with us the Methodist family a place where God is real I wish you a successful listening and the blessing of God let us pray Father God we thank you for giving us yet another opportunity to express ourselves in worship to you as a creator, as a maker, as a defender. We thank you for sparing our lives despite the troubles, the challenges, and the COVID-19. You have been our God, our stronghold. And so we thank you for this opportunity that you have provided for my listeners to hear your word, the word of hope, the word of life. Grant that this message will bring life and take away fear and intimidation from the lives of your people. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. I am taking my text from the Gospel as recorded by St. John, chapter 20, and which I read from verse 19 through verse 31. He says, the disciples were afraid of the Jewish leaders. And on the evening of that same Sunday, they locked themselves in a room. Suddenly, Jesus appeared in the middle of the group. He greeted them with the message, peace be unto you, and showed them his hands and his side. When the disciples saw the Lord, they became very happy. After Jesus has greeted them again, he said, I am sending you just as the Father has sent me. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they will be forgiven. That if you don't forgive their sins, they will not be forgiven. Although Thomas the twin was one of the twelve disciples, he wasn't with the others when Jesus appeared to them. So they told him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said, First, I must see the nail the nail scars in his hands and touch them with my finger. I must put my hand where the spear went into his side. I wouldn't believe unless I do this. A week later, the disciples were together again. This time Thomas was with them. Jesus came in while the doors were still locked and stood in the middle of the group. He greeted his disciples with the same peace and said to Thomas, put your finger here and look at my hands. Put your hand into my side. Stop doubting and have faith. Thomas replied, You are my Lord and my God. Jesus said, Thomas, do you have faith because you have seen me? The people who have faith in me without seeing me are the ones who are really blessed. Jesus walked many miracles, many other miracles for his disciples. And not all of them 
are written in this book. But these are written so that you will put your faith in Jesus as the Messiah and the Son of God. If you have faith in him, you will have true life. Worthy is the Lamb. Hallelujah. From this passage, I have taken the theme as Jesus' appearance and commission to the disciples. Jesus' appearance and commission to the disciples. From this passage, it is most likely that the disciples continued to meet in the upper room where the Last Supper had been held. But their meeting was under fear. They were afraid. They knew the Jews were still bitter and anxious pursuing them after Christ's death. So they were meeting in fear, listening fearfully the next steps. The Sanhedrin authorities were sent to arrest them. It was at this meeting that Jesus suddenly appeared in their midst and greeted them with the normal everyday Eastern greetings. Peace be to you. But to the disciples, Christ's appearance and greetings meant much more than the normal greetings. It meant that they are safe from trouble and perilous times they were passing through. It also means may God give you all or everything that is good and that you need. After the greetings, Jesus gave the disciples the great commission, which the church must never forget. He said that as the Father has sent him forth, so he sent them forth also. This is what we call the Great Commission, the duty, the call, and the commitment of every follower of Christ. And it simply means that Jesus Christ needs the church. He needs the believer and the Christian. Jesus came with the message of salvation for all men. Now he was going back to the Father. That message could only reach all men through the church. And that is the disciples of Christ. In other words, the church or its followers are to speak the mind and the message of Christ to the world, run the errands, and do the work. Again, it means that the church or Christ's followers need Jesus. A person who is to be sent out needs someone to send him. He needs a message to take. He needs an authority and power to back up his message and mostly he needs someone to whom he may turn to when he is in difficulty the church Christians and believers need Jesus without Jesus the church or the believer has no message without him the church has no power and without Christ the believer has no one or anybody to turn to when in difficulty or in opposition. Without Christ, the church has nothing to enlighten our mind. There's nothing to strengthen her without the power of the Holy Spirit. And without Christ, the church has nothing to encourage her in her heart. Therefore, the church and the individual believer is solely dependent on Jesus for his personal peace, salvation of the world, and the world peace. There is another interesting thing about this message, and that is the sending out of the disciples to the world. It is parallel to the sending out of Jesus by God to the world. No Christian can be really no Christian can really understand the relationship between Jesus and his Father until we discover it was continually dependent on Jesus' perfect obedience, submission, and love to his Father. Jesus could only be his Father's messenger in the salvation of the world through his obedience to him. 
the church and indeed every Christian is only fit to be the messenger and the instrument of Christ when he or she perfectly loves him and obeys him. The church and present believers and indeed every Christian must never be out to propagate a message except the message of Christ and him crucified. She must resist every temptation to follow her own man-made policies or develop self-will strategies outside the will of God. Our strength weakens, our wisdom fails whenever we try to solve some problems without seeking the will and the guidance of Jesus Christ. Jesus' appearance to his disciples is marked with spectacular events. Again, he breathed on his disciples and gave them the Holy Spirit. The coming of the Holy Spirit is like a new creation. It is like wakening of life from the dead. It is a divine force or power that overshadows the person and tackles every fear, timidity, and also emboldens the believer to discover his rights and direction. Whenever the Holy Spirit comes upon the church or believers, the church or the believer is reawakened and fully recreated for our task. With this reawakening, additional power was given to the church in operation. This is the power to remit or retain the sins of anyone. It is necessary to be careful to fully understand what Christ meant here. God's purpose for sending his begotten son was for the world to be reconciled to him through the death of Christ. The reason for that reconciliation was the forgiveness of man upon the death of his son. Therefore, it is the great privilege of the church and the believer in Christ to constantly convey the message. And this time, the message, the announcement, and the fact of God's forgiveness to man. This sentence, therefore, lays down the duty to the church to convey forgiveness to the penitent in heart and to warn the impenitent that they are forfeiting the mercy of God. The story of Jesus' appearance and commission to the disciples also makes the character of Thomas to stand out clearly. Thomas, to Thomas, the cross, the suffering, and death was only what he had long expected. Initially, when Jesus had proposed going to Bethany to raise up Lazarus, and from there to Jerusalem, Thomas' reaction was, let us also go that we may die with him. And see that in John chapter 11, verse 16. Thomas was a natural pessimist, but he never lacked courage. What Thomas had expected had happened, and when it came, he became broken-hearted, so much so that he resolved to be alone to face his sorrows, pains, and suffering. Thomas' world ended with the death of Jesus on the cross, and he could not make any further public appearance that caused him that caused him to miss the first coming of Jesus Christ among the disciples. As another week elapsed, Jesus came back and appeared before them. And this time Thomas was there. Jesus repeated his very words of Thomas, invited him, and demanded that he proceed to carry out his cross examination. Hmm. At this juncture, Thomas was more broken, this time with love and devotion. And he declared, my Lord and my God. Note, Thomas was neither commended or reprimanded. But Jesus' words to him and all believers is very instructive here. We are blessed, enriched, and rewarded 
when we use the eye of faith rather than sight to believe the truth about God's power, existence, salvation, forgiveness, and healing. Arguments, philosophies, ideologies, empirical evidence about the existence of God can only earn us academic qualifications, but only the eye of faith can see the wounded Christ on the cross. It's only the eye of faith that can appropriate the benefits of Christ's resurrection and the power thereof. Thomas made the only one mistake. He withdrew from the Christian fellowship, at least the first after the agony, travels, death of Christ and the resurrection. Normally, we tend to miss a great deal when we separate or keep off ourselves from Christian fellowship and try to be alone. Whenever we are alone, sorrow, pains, agony, bitterness, and frustration deepens. But once we share our burdens with others, it becomes light and bearable. Christian brothers and sisters, let us not completely write off Thomas, the first and early Christian doubter. Thomas was a man who would never say that he understood what he did not understand. He would never be the believer that would say he believed when he never believed. There is an uncompromising honesty in Thomas. He was not a pretender or a hypocrite. Thomas was not the kind of man that would recite or rattle the Christian creed without understanding what it all meant about. Today, many believers declare and proclaim that they believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son. But they are deeply rooted in the worship of other gods, they are hypocrites. They believe in Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father and the Lord of their life, but they never obeyed him once. Would walk piously into churches to share in the Holy Eucharist in memory of the Lord and Master of the life, but go back to surrender to other mundane altars and share with the gifts distributed from such altars. These are the hypocrites in our churches and congregations. Challenges. What are your fears today as a Christian? Are you afraid of all the black males around you? Or the indignities, persecutions, and killings that Christians are passing through in our time, especially in Nigeria? Are you still struggling with doubt, difficulties, discouragement, unbelief, word attack and opposition, falsehood and wickedness? Is it marginalization, frustration, lockdown, isolation, injustice, barrage criticism and misrepresentation? Jesus is here with the message of peace and that peace is Peace be unto you. Are you ready to put away your doubts and fears about your life and God? There are strong testimonies from reputable Christians and friends about the resurrection of Christ, the power of God, the Holy Spirit, divine healing, powers in prayers, Christian holiness, the sufferings of God, the second coming of Christ, about heaven and hell, punishment of the wicked. We have all these testimonies around. Don't be the man or the woman of unless, unless I see. If you doubted the miracles of the Red Sea that happened thousands of years ago, you doubted the deliverance of the Israelites in Egypt, with the angel of God that went through their doorposts and saved them. 
all the miraculous salvation that every firstborn of the Israelites and the destruction of the Egyptians firstborn. If you doubted the virgin birth, you doubted Noah's ark. You also doubted the 1918 influenza that happened in Nigeria. Do you still doubt the COVID-19 that has happened in our own time? If you doubted it, why then do you wear the mask? And why do you remain indoors? The hand of God is upon the universe to make men and women tread the path of rectitude. I pray that you will receive power from the Holy Spirit to overcome your fear, doubt, and intimidation. This is an opportunity for some people to receive pardon and forgiveness for all the atrocities they have committed against one another. You may not likely have another of this great opportunity again. The restoration of Christ and the empowerment of the church by extension all believers has offered us an olive branch especially to every unrepented sinner to receive pardon and be admitted into the common world of believers I pray may God grant you the peace that he gave to the disciples and to the church and by faith that you will go with the power and the authority to spread the good news that Jesus is Lord. That he cares that there is life in him. That it is in him we live, we move, and have our being. And that the world will be saved through believing in Christ. May God bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon all of you and give his peace now and forevermore. God bless you.